doctor here at <laughs> here at Tufts, and I have a weird sunshine over here. Um, this is the second installment of the Path to Carbon Neutrality webinar series hosted by our office, the Office of Sustainability, um, entitled Greenhouse Gas Emissions and Energy Usage at Tufts. Uh, next month, we'll be hearing from Tufts Chief Investment Officer about Tufts Endowment and the Responsible Investment Advisory Group that met and agreed on fossil fuel divestment policies that was announced earlier this year. In this webinar, Tao Hyong from the Operations Division and Shoshana Dodge from the Office of Sustainability will be discussing the Tufts Energy Data Dashboard that exists um, and our greenhouse gas inventory. We are also joined today by Charu Vijay, who is an intern in our office um, and also an eco rep, and she'll be providing technical support for this webinar. Thank you for, for being here for us, Charu. Um, so to start us off, Tao and Shoshana, uh, we're wondering what kind of information and questions you had coming into today's webinar, because uh, we want to try to hold questions till the end, but you can put your questions in the chat right now, and then they'll get a little um, heads up to make sure they, they cover that if they, if they see it in time. Um, and, then, and then we'll ask for questions again at the end, uh, in which case, if your question wasn't answered, um, that I will be, I'll be asking the questions of Shoshana and Tao. Um, all right, so Tao Hong works in the Office of the VP of Operations as the Senior Energy and Special Programs Analyst. So in her role, she oversees utility bill management system that Tufts uses and administers its database and accounting processes. Um, she also manages the university-wide budget and forecasts for the energy expenses and, and revenues to support fiscal decision-making processes. Um, Tao graduated from Bryant University with a bachelor's degree in finance, and she will be covering the energy trends on Tufts four campuses. The second speaker we're going to have is Shoshana Dodge. She joined my office, the Office of Sustainability, in August of 2016, and she is the Education and Outreach Program Administrator. In this role, she works on creating awareness around sustainability amongst tough students, staff, and faculty. She also manages sustainability data for our office, including running the annual greenhouse gas inventory. She has a bachelor's degree in biology and environmental studies from St. Olaf College, and in 2020, earned a master's in environmental policy and planning from Tufts. And obviously, as I mentioned, she'll be explaining how Tufts calculates its greenhouse gas emissions. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tao to take it away. Thank you, Tina, for the introduction. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tao. I am excited to be here with you today to talk about um, the energy dashboard. So first, I'm going to give everyone a general information about what are these dashboards? If you um, haven't seen them before, um, what data is covered in the dashboard, where they come from, um, how they are intended to be used, just so you have the basics um, of what they are before you start going into the details. Um, for most of my time though, I will walk you through the dashboard. And when I, once I get to that section, I will post a link to the current published dashboard right now. And, and then you can follow along if you are interested. Um, one thing I want to note is that there will be a difference between what I will be showing you and, um, and what you will see in the link because the, 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 the data is a dashboard is uh, from fiscal 20 um, and we have just updated them to fiscal 21 recently and there will be just some small changes. But for the most part, like 97% of them, you're just looking at the same information. So you, you won't get lost. The goal is that after my presentation, um, I, I would like you to walk away with knowing how to find the utility information at TAPS and just understand of what you're looking at so that you can uh, support your decision making process or you can just find the information that you need. And then hopefully along the way, you might learn a thing or two about the energy at Tops. On the right, you are going to see two snapshots of the dashboards. Um, don't squeeze your eyes right now to look at the text. I just want to give you an idea of how the dashboards look like. Um, so first is uh, the data in the dashboards. 
They come from the utility bills that we receive every month. Um, the data are monthly prorated so that it can be used for reporting uh, quarterly, monthly, annually, etc. And uh, it's also very good for trending, uh, finding patterns in the data, etc. The data in the dashboards, uh, I will present a series of four dashboards today. It will be from fiscal 2016 forward. Um, sustainability does um, keep track um, a great of the data prior to 2016. And I believe that you will see Shoshana showing uh, uh, 1919 data up to now. Uh, but for the dashboard, it's just only uh, five years back. Um, before we go into the goals of the dashboards, I think it would be useful to tell you why we make these dashboards in the first place. And, and, and the reason is because we often get asked similar questions, like people would come and ask us, um, how much energy do taps use? What, uh, how much electricity or gas that Medford campus used last year? How does that change uh, year over year, um, et cetera? So those uh, might be the questions that you have. Um, and so our goals is that we can provide you with a high level, quick access to those information so that you can get um, information by yourself. Um, so think of that like an info desk, right? That you, uh, if you have a specific question in mind and not everybody has the same exact question, you can go in and look for that information. Um, so with that in mind, our goals is that these dashboards are, uh, are for the uh, purpose of exploration. You are going to learn about the energy. You are going to understand what you're looking at through basic visuals uh, and, 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 and uh, the information is accessible and, and, and can be seen by everyone. Um, so you might guess that the audience for the dashboard is, pro is probably uh, a lot of people. Um, so first we make the dashboards so that the staff and the faculty across the universities uh, at different functions, uh, they, they are able to get access to this data. Because often um, they have to report on certain parts of the energy, like uh, we have to report the fuel oils for health and safety requirements. We do have to report electricity for um, commercial building surveys, stuff like that. Uh, sustainability do that every year for emissions, um, et cetera. So, uh, so, so uh, there, there are a lot of reporting needs for these data uh, and the students uh, come to us all the time uh, looking for these data so they can find ways to help the university save energy, uh, save water on uh, the buildings that they are interested in. Um, consultants often need these data, right? Uh, if they are going to deliver any um, ad hoc analysis or recommend any um, uh, ways for us to save energy, then this is usually the first few things that they ask to look at. And last but not least, the public community can learn more about TAPS, how we consume energy, and um, can also uh, download the data and, 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 and look at the data as well. Um, so I already mentioned about the uses, and for the KPIs, I will mention as we walk through the dashboards. So these next two dashboards are more at the granular level. So before, uh, in here, you see the data at the university and campus, but uh, for these two dashboards, you are going to see the data at the building level, if that is available. Um, so students, uh, often they want to know what is the energy usage at my house, uh, if you live in a co-host or at the Barnum Hall or at um, Halleston Hall, whatever they might live at. So uh, they might be able to find that information here. And it is available in the map form, think like a Google map. When you look for places to eat or for sightseeing, this is similar to that. Uh, or you can look for the same data in an Excel form uh, um, and this is usually ways that I like to look at the data as well. So um, that is also an option. Um, so that is all the general information I want to cover with the uh, dashboards. And I'm going to post a link so you can uh, follow. Oh, hold on, let me post to everyone. Um, 
Once you click on that link, you are going to get to the uh, public dashboard. And again, there will be some differences between what uh, I'm showing you and what you're seeing, but for the most part, they're the same. So what you're looking at is the energy dashboard. And by energy, I mean electricity, uh, natural gas, whatever information except water and sewer. Um, because the, the metrics that we use for energy are not necessarily the same as what we use for water, right? Because we report carbon emissions on energy, but we don't do that for water, for example. Um, and, and, and so uh, up, up on the top, you see four numbers in big bold uh, in blue, and they are the consumption, which are measured in MMBTU, the carbon emissions in kilograms. Now you also see that in metric tons, but that is easily convertible. Um, the gross square feet, which is a total um, square feet of the spaces that use energy. So if they don't use energy, it would not be near. And then the energy use intensity is a popular measure that people, uh, that, that you might see them in, in different contexts too. Um, and there are different ways to, 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 to calculate uh, different variation of it. Um, basically it is a uh, energy usage of the building divided by the square feet. And that gives uh, us a measure of the building um, intensity and how that compared to uh, another building. So if you have two buildings, you want to see which building is doing better in terms of energy. Uh, usually people see this, use this number uh, and the lower the number, the better it is. Um, as you hover the mouse above the numbers, you can see the definition. And you can also see the table, which show you how that number changed year over year. And uh, what is the percentage of change? And that you can do that with other metrics up here as well. So that is an easy way that you can see the number uh, without having to do uh, this kind of filter as I do in here. Uh, down here is a um, utility type or uh, think of that like the energy source. So in your house, you got the gas bill, the electric bills, water bills, etc. So those are, are, are exactly what are the components of that. Uh, I'm going to go back to 21 because that is the latest data. And you can see that 57% uh, of cups uh, buying is gas, 23% is electricity, 19% is steam. So we are a pretty big uh, buyer of gas. But if you look at 2016, for example, that's the earliest data I have in here, that component change, right? Um, and then down here is a, a line chart of the consumption by year. So I have uh, the last three year, well, I had last year in here and then the previous year and then the previous historical average, just so you can sort of get an idea of how that change of time. Uh, last, last one in here, and I won't, won't go into detail, but this is a carbon emissions uh, broken down by different energy source. So, um, uh, the the Shoshana is going to give us a, a, a is going to give you more information how they are calculated uh, and etc. But um, if you just want a, a quick high level of how everything changed year over year, this year place that you can look at and uh, look like we we do have a declining from 2016 to now, so that's good. Um, and then you can also do filter by campus if you are say if you are in Boston campus and you want to see how the number look. You can uh, filter by Boston, you can filter by Medford, we want to see how Medford looks. And actually, as I filter these number, these number up here change, right? Um, and I think that's kind of interesting because before uh, this number was like double this number. So it looked like if we don't have Medford, it is 0.73 and in Medford it is 0.73. Thirty six. So, 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 so you can do some analysis, quick high level in here, and see how that breakdown of the utility change. So the next one is a water dashboard. Um, the water is measured in U.S. gallon, so not MMBTU, and the metrics. You, you don't see carbon in here because you know 
uh, water don't have carbon. Um, but you're going to see I break down by uh, different campus. So you can see how much Medford use, how much Boston, how sign campus you, et cetera, and have an idea of where we use water the most. The data for water is more granular. So you are going to see uh, at the building level, like down here. Uh, and and uh, you can see a bunch of bubble here. And maybe you can guess that I am referring to each bubble as a building. And you can see the bigger the bubble or the darker the blue, whichever way you want to see it is a higher the consumption. And uh, let's say if you are interested in just looking at the Medford and see what are the top five buildings that use the most water, uh, this is the place where you can explore the data. So look like CEP is a lot of water, Halliston, Pearson, Langway. Um, so that's a quick way of doing that. If you have a specific building in mind, and I, did I just mention Coho, right? So I can just go in here and look at Coho and I'm just going to pick a random building. And um, I can look at the building, see what is the consumption by hover the mouse above that figure. And here on the right, you see how is that uh, water usage change year over year uh, for that specific house. And it looked like they use quite a bit more in the last quarter of 21 versus 20, which makes sense because we, we were not uh, on campus uh, in the last quarter of 20 due to COVID. So lastly is the um, map, and the map uh, has, a, has a both energy and water on it. Uh, think of it like a Google map. So you would maneuver this map the same way you do with Google. You zoom in, you zoom out. You see sort of four different blob of color in here, and that four different campuses. Each of the bubble is a building. Uh, the bubble has the same size, but once you cl click on the bubble, that give you the energy information, broken down by the energy source of that building, as you can see down here on the light chart. And you can also can quickly see how uh, the energy mix in that building as well. So look like Dental has a 76-24 uh, split between electricity and steam. Uh, I'm just clicking randomly. Uh, 160s in a uh, four have a 60 and 40% split and look like they're pretty in line with large historical average. Um, so again, that's another way of analyze the data uh, quickly right here, depending on what you're looking for. And you can looking for a building that you are interested in if you do not know exactly where they are in the map. Um, so last but not least is a, a data table. And this is just a table of way of looking at things. Um, a lot of the analysis that you have seen before, they are pretty uh, basic and they are more for exploration. So in the data table, you can look at, uh, you can download the data uh, and, and, and do maybe regression on them if you are interested and you can filter by what you need. So I'm going to go to filter by Medford. I'm going to filter by, I don't know, academic building and I can filter by years if needed, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, and you can download data uh, by clicking on the download button, there's an option for cross tab and you can download that into Excel. Um, I realize though in the link that I provided to you, uh, the download option is not available for, for data, but for the Excel option. So I'm going to post a link to download the data on this tab in the next time I update the dashboard so that you can uh, download the data and, 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 and uh, analyze it whatever ways that you want. So that is all I have uh, for the dashboards. And uh, I'm going to hand over the presentation to Shoshana and she will give you a much deeper insight into greenhouse gas inventory. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Tao. Wonderful. So um, I'm going to start by um, just putting up a poll to see um, how, what, for the audience today, what your background is, is with carbon accounting to see kind of how much I should explain.
Okay, so we have most participating. So we have about half of people that have heard of it, but they don't know too much about it. So I will go into a bit of detail, even though a quarter of people are very familiar here. Okay. I'll, so I'll just share that with you all to show you that 50% of folks are want some more detail. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and share my slides. Um, hmm, I thought I was going to be able to see my, oh man. I thought I was going to be able to see my notes, but it's not possible. <laughs> yeah, if you do a, if you do an escape, it'll make the window be not full screen, and then you can you can put your notes up on the side. Oh, true. No, I have two screens. It's just that my I'm in. I wanted to look in presenter view. I wanted to look at my um, on my other. Do you know what I mean? Zoom isn't yeah. letting me do it basically, but yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm sure I can remember what I was going to say. So hi, everyone. Again, I'm Shoshana. I work in the Office of Sustainability. So I just want to start off with showing that, um, uh, as you can see here, Tau is going over our energy data. My data is going back really far. You can see here it goes back to the year 2000. And again, this is all in fiscal year. And just to define fiscal year, that is um, it goes July, sorry, yeah, July 1st of the year before to June 30th. So um, fiscal year 2020 started July 1st, 2019 until uh, June 30th, 2020. Um, sorry, if you're chatting me, I'm not really good at seeing both. Oh, okay. Um, uh, okay, so this, what we see from this graph is that, um, you know, over t over that long period of time, 20 years, Tufts has increased its energy consumption. Um, it's been, you know, fairly steady over the past number of years, I would say. Um, part of that is because we've increased square footage and um, improved the HVAC and ventilation systems. But even for all that, um, we've actually decreased our greenhouse gas emissions over that time period. Um, so that's really interesting. And that's because, you know, we used to use uh, carbon intensive energy sources like oil um, and kind of move towards uh, natural gas, which is has less carbon emissions, fewer carbon emissions. And that's a, a trend that a lot, I, I believe that ha kind of happened in America with energy somewhere around, I wanna say, 2005, 2008, something like that. So now uh, we are, Tufts is 23% below, it's our 1990 baseline for greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and which was part of our goal, we had a goal to be 10 to 20% below 1990 by 2020. So we did reach that. Oh, 2005 was peak natural gas use, good to know. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's where we are at now. And this this graph is just from greenhouse gases from energy and fleet. So cars, Tufts owns. Now, when we're looking at um, all the sources of greenhouse gas emissions at Tufts, um, this is what I measure. Um, so it, it goes a little bit more than just energy. So as you can see here, um, we have electricity that's purchased from the grid. We have, um, and that's in blue, uh, in red is natural gas and mainly natural gas. We have sometimes use a little bit of oil in some of our campuses or maybe propane, very small amounts to burn on campus for heating, cooling and electricity. And that's because we actually, the biggest reason we use so much natural gas on the Medford campus is the central energy plant. Uh, we burn natural gas there that creates heating, cooling and electricity all at once. Um, so then we have the steam that is purchased to heat the Boston campus in green. Um, and then next we have university air travel. So on uh, air travel on university business. And I'll explain more in detail about these categories in a second. Um, then we have employee commuting and student commuting, the next biggest sources in blue and orange there. Really quick, I do want to point out that you see here is that energy 
basically comprises about 75% of our what we're currently measuring for our greenhouse gas emissions. And then followed by air travel and commuting. So those are really the big sources. And then we have a little bit of study abroad air travel, transmission and distribution losses. Uh, that comes from electricity. So there's some losses uh, with that that we don't even get to use, but does have greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and then we have some sources here that are really tiny, like our fleet and our university, uh, other university ground transportation, like when um, athletic teams take buses to, to um, other schools. And I'll explain this in a second, but the, the stuff that's like not showing up here is because it's so small, it's called de minimis. It includes um, paper purchasing, the animals that we own on the Grafton campus, wastewater, waste for tufts, fertilizer use, and refrigerants and chemicals, although we could be capturing more of the refrigerants. We're not, we haven't gotten a great protocol for capturing 100% of that data. And so as you can see here, the total emissions um, in fiscal year 2019 was 59,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent emissions. And for fiscal year 2020, a lot of things have stayed pretty similar in the pie chart, but you can see that we reduced our emissions by 16%. And some of this is a bit estimated. And that's, um, I'll get into that in a second. Now, just to explain some scopes, um, I was, again, all, this is all in my notes, which I'm not seeing right now, but um, we can see here we have scope one, two, and three, and this green part is also scope two. So scope one is, um, is what we burn, sorry, what, uh, what we're directly responsible for the emissions. Um, it happens on our campus. So we burn natural gas on our campus. That's our scope one emissions. We can bust that on our campus. Scope two is energy that we purchase from an outside entity to, for our own operations. So we have to purchase electricity from the utility, from the grid for our, our operations, and we have to purchase steam from a different company to heat our campus. And then scope three is other all other activities that um, that uh, another another company would be their scope one. It's their direct emissions, but we have to do these things. We do these things. Um, our behavior is basically completely influencing these things. So, for example, air travel. Um, you would assume United Airlines does their own carbon footprint. American Airlines does their own carbon footprint, and that and that those air miles are part of their scope one emissions. But we're the ones doing the travel, so um, our operations are kind of also causing those greenhouse gas emissions. And some of the scope one is actually in these like fleet is actually scope one and ground transportation is scope one because, um, or sorry, that's scope three. Fleet, we own the vehicles, so that would be scope one. So, so there are some scope three emissions that we have not yet calculated. Um, and they include some, I don't know like what percentage of universities do calculate these, but they include things like other purchased goods and services, such as the food Tufts purchases. Um, capital goods, which means building new buildings and the, the carbon footprint from that, and uh, more comprehensive air travel. And I'll get into that in a second. So where did our emissions go down in fiscal year 2020? We saw some decreases in natural gas use on Medford campus um, from the central energy plant as well. And we saw a decrease in uh, grid electricity use and uh, less steam was purchased to heat the, oh, sorry, the steam for the Boston campus was actually produced cleaner uh, in fiscal year 2020 because it was produced with more cogeneration. Now also our air travel emissions decreased by 42% um, in fiscal year 2020. And that's really because, um, you know, COVID was becoming a thing kind of midway but in that fiscal year, it, um, I, but really didn't really, probably affect travel so much until late February, I would think. Um, 
And then we estimated lower emissions from commuting since we did think there was barely any commuting starting mid-March of 2020 through the end of the fiscal year that summer, likely due to COVID. So uh, just to show you what was in the tiny slices of that pie chart, this is what our scope three emissions are. So as you can see, again, we have commuting here, which is a big chunk of our scope three. Air travel is the biggest chunk of our scope three emissions, followed by more air travel for students studying abroad. And this is really where you can see how small of car, um, emissions these other sources contribute in comparison. So um, waste, people are always asking about waste. Well, it's a really small slice in terms of greenhouse gas emissions from our total. And I'll talk about that in a second. Um, I just wanted to show that this uh, graph shows that Medford, the Medford campus has the bulk of our emissions from energy use. Um, it's over half, it's about 57% here. And that is why the university chose to um, do a decarbonization plan for the Medford campus prior to figuring that out for the other campuses. So um, since we have some newbies to carbon accounting, I'll just get into how to calculate, uh, how we calculate greenhouse gases um, from energy, which is, this is standard um, greenhouse gas protocol, uh, which is an organization you can look up or a protocol from the World Resources Institute. So essentially you take um, a volume of energy um, you multiply it by a carbon emissions factor or maybe a methane emissions factor, and then you're able to get a metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent emissions. So I'll explain that. So for in this example, this um, 3 million uh, CCF of natural gas is how much natural gas the Medford campus used um, in fiscal year 2020. And I multiply that um, in a spreadsheet by an emissions factor, which is uh, 12 pounds of CO2 per every CCF of natural gas. And then I have to do a conversion factor to get into metric tons from pounds. And then I'm able to calculate that that's 18,414 metric tons of carbon dioxide. Um, I do the same then with that natural gas for methane. Um, as you can see, the emissions factor for the methane is 0 0.002 pounds of methane per CCF. It's very tiny um, in comparison to CO2, but I'm still able to capture what the, the methane is. Um, and I also have to use a global warming potential factor, which is 28 here. It's all the way on the right side of my screen. Um, that means that methane is 28 times better at warming the planet than carbon dioxide. And because of that, I'm able to get it into this MTCO2E unit, which is carbon dioxide equivalent emissions. And that's how you can convert something from methane to something equal to what that would be in CO2. And then we would do that for nitrous oxide, a third greenhouse gas, which is 265 times um, as, uh, global warming potential than CO2. And I get these emissions factors from the EPA and the global warming potentials are from the IPCC. So adding, I would add up those two MTCO2s and I would get 18,422 metric tons CO2E. All right, so how do we estimate greenhouse gases from our air travel at Tufts? So I, I acquire all the, the total miles flown uh, through the two travel agencies that uh, Tufts contracts with. So we have two preferred travel agencies, Egencia and the Travel Collaborative, that uh, staff and faculty, and maybe sometimes students, go to them to book their flights. And we're able to capture all that data um, on miles flown. And we, however, we know that there's must be staff and faculty and students flying on behalf of Tufts that are not purchasing it through um, those two travel agencies. So we are missing that data and we don't know how much it is that we're missing. So I think what's interesting is that it's air travel is so much of our greenhouse gas emissions and it's not even complete. And how do we calculate it from study abroad? Very similar, we get the list of 
where all the students studied abroad in a fiscal year, an ac which is an academic year, and we calculate the miles flown. Um, we've done it in Google Maps. We've done it in another site called WebFlyer. And how do we estimate greenhouse gases from commuting? We do a survey typically annually, what we were doing it before COVID, where we ask people how they commuted to campus during last week. So we, this is for staff, faculty, and students. And then we extrapolate that data to all employees and all off-campus students. So maybe we only get a 50% response rate on the survey, but we extrapolate it to the entire population. And then we um, estimate that, numbers such as, okay, people are commuting five days a week, 42 weeks per year, something like that. But we're able to know what percentage of people are driving, taking the train, biking, which is carbon neutral, and calculate the carbon. Um, so there is a, some estimating that goes into this because you have to assume that what, you know, if they filled up the survey in April that they're commuting like that the entire year, which might not be the case in New England. So how do we calculate greenhouse gases from fleet and university transportation? So for fleet, everyone that um, purchases gas for a Tufts vehicle has a special credit card. So we're able to track all the gas and diesel purchases. So that is pretty accurate. And for other university transportation, this is where I have to get very creative. I get all the bus trip mileage from our charter bus company, ANA Metro. I get the shuttle routes for our tough shuttles, the athletics bus schedules. I find out how many people had to get their mileage reimbursed by another office. Um, and I estimate some more fuel purchases on other university credit cards that people used to use. And then with waste, um, we get the total trash and compost tonnage. Landfill obviously has the most emissions, more than even an incineration. And when we compost, it actually has negative emissions because it sequesters carbon. There are no emissions with recycling because there's no tailpipe emissions from recycling, except the transportation to the recycling facility, which we don't count. Um, but other than that, recycling just reduces our tonnage in, at the landfill. Okay. <laughs> So those are my extra slides. Um, so I think that's all you have from me and I'll stop sharing at this point and take questions. Great, thank you Shoshana. So if folks could put their questions right in the, the chat um, and I'm, you know, if you wanna say it in, in person, uh, you can un, unmute. The um, couple of questions that uh, Park had put uh, in the chat before he left were, um can he was just asking this is for utah he was just asking if um some statistics around the number of staff students and faculty be maybe put somewhere on the dashboard so users can interpret information on a per person level um for comparison to peer institutions do you want to speak to that at all yeah i uh yeah that is a good um Suggestion: I um I, I don't have access to that uh, number of staff, students, faculty database yet. I, I, I'm sure that that you know that, that there could be a place that holds that information. So um, I can look around and, and see where that can be mapped to the dashboard. Uh, we have that data. I think Shoshana has that data actually. I have it. Yeah, I've put it together, but I wonder if there's a universal dashboard for that. But um, I do keep track of that in the greenhouse gas spreadsheet because we try to get that per person, okay. especially for estimates like commuting and things. So, so, so that is on an, an, an Excel, I, I assume. Yeah, I can, and then we could we could streamline it. So that's a great idea. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then this next question is for you, Shoshana. Is the electricity measure provided without renewable energy credits? Um, for just, yeah, and so that's the first question. <laughs> yeah, the electricity that emissions factor that we're using is from EPA eGrid. So it just takes the average um, for our New England region for what the emissions are, you know, percentage of coal, percentage, which is very low here, uh, percentage of natural gas, all of those things. And yes, um, does it take out RECs? Um, I, I, 
I have to say that I can't remember based on that, but I think whatever the Rex part is, it's a very small part of our to of the total electricity emissions for the region. Um, but I think in order to count the Rex, we would have to use a different factor called residual emissions factor. Um, so then the follow-up question to that is, for some purposes, users need to know total electricity as opposed to just net emissions. Um, but so I don't know what that's maybe not a question because the, you can get that on the dashboard. Um, beyond this utility dashboard, what is our best frequently updated source for all university related aviation, staff travel, faculty research travel, sports teams and music groups, course field trips? So I feel like you um, already answered that, Shoshana, in the presentation where you explained how we get that information. And I believe our office is the best place to get that information, but we calculate it once a year. So um, can't not uh, data that's available, um, updated by day. All right, other questions? Does anyone else on the call um, have any questions? I see a lot of familiar names here. All righty. Well, if there's no questions, then we can give you a little bit of time back in your day. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and we'll uh, spend a little bit of time um, poking around the de energy dashboard. Uh, our greenhouse gas inventory can be found on our website. Um, and then I just want to remind you to mark your calendar for December's webinar, Fossil Fuel Divestment and the Endowment, on Monday, December 13th at 1 o'clock. Um, and this is again where Craig Smith, the Chief Investment Officer, will discuss Tufts' decisions surrounding the endowment, covering the divestment from coal and tar sands announcement last year, as well as future plans. So thank you again, and thank you to Tao and Shoshana and Charu for being here today and sharing information and helping support the webinar. And we'll be putting our emails in the chat now, and we'll be sending the recording of the webinar to all that registered for this one. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.